Hey guys, Brett Tremley back with another episode of Between Two Friends. And today I am really excited to have a good friend of mine, Keith O'Brien, on with us. Keith is the founder of Page One, an Amazon growth marketing agency. And I'm just going to ask a bunch of Amazon related questions. Hopefully, I hit on all the questions you've always uh, wondered about selling services on Amazon and how Amazon works, et cetera. So, Keith, man, welcome to the show. Thanks for jumping on with us. Thanks so much for having me, Brett. Just to give some context, context and perspective for people listening, you're not like selling five dollars worth of I don't know, you know, uh, candles on Amazon here. Yeah, but if you sell a lot of five dollars worth of candles, man, they add up. <laughs> that quick. Yeah, we. Yeah. So we manage a, a, a book of business, which does, uh, you know, tens of millions. And then we do project based work uh, for a ton of other clients that, you know, you add up all that together. It's probably pushing half a billion or so a year that our work is generating. Amazing. So let, let me let's back up. Like, how, how does this work? I have an idea for a product and I want to sell it on Amazon and you know, I'm guessing people try to do it themselves and they just spend years like learning, right? This is like anything else. You can either take the time to learn yourself or you can go with, with page one or a company like page one to help accelerate the growth. Is that, is that why, you know, where your business comes in is, is yeah. you just know it better and you'll save people a ton of time and heartache. Even though Amazon does take a lot of the heavy lifting off of somebody compared to like selling on your own website. Uh, you know, the traffic's all internal, you know, they've got the, the, the logistics and fulfillment all handled with their FBA program. Uh, there's still quite a lot to learn. And so you do need to have uh, your head around how all of it works, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go do it all. Right. So um, where clients use us on the smaller side would be uh, potentially doing something that they just don't want to spend the time doing. You know, all the keyword research and copywriting, you know, uh, our, we do, we've done thousands and thousands and thousands of listings, right? Um, you know, or there's just areas that you really should bring in a professional like product photography, right? It's, it's become the visual assets on Amazon have become one of the most important parts, uh, you know, of the product listings. You just don't want to be, you know, taking photos with your iPhone and, you know, in your basement, and putting it yeah. up and thinking they're going to do well. Right. Um, yeah. Managing advertising is a whole nother ball game. It's very complex now. Um, but most businesses that we work with already have a presence on Amazon. Uh, they're doing X number, you know, maybe they're doing a million or $2 million or $3 million a year. They don't really have a lot of internal commitment to it. It's just kind of ticking over doing what it does as one more sales channel. Um, and we can really throw gas on that fire and, and accelerate the growth. There's usually terms that, that catch on just in life, not just in business, right? Um, there were like in law school, there was terms that some kids would grab onto and always use. Um, you know, I mean, like SEO was always a big one, like, Ooh, sure. this. and then now it's drop shipping, right? And what the heck is drop shipping? Just people kind of like throw that around. And, and that's, that's the term that I think people have, have caught on to, to pretend like they know what they're talking about. But I, that's funny. So Amazon, you can sell in two different ways. You can have a seller account or a vendor account, right? So a vendor account would generally is a bigger business, Amazon, they're wholesaling their product to, to Amazon, right? So within the vendor program, uh, if you go on Amazon, it'll say ships from and sold by Amazon when you buy something sometimes. So some of those, Amazon's bought those goods up front and then they're distributing it when they sell it. But some of those are actually part of their dropship program. So for example, we have a client with big goods like foosball tables, pool tables, things like that. So they store those in the warehouse. Amazon sells it for them on the in, listing and they drop ship it. In their own warehouse. Correct. Okay. So, yeah. so I, I'm in Indiana. I have my own warehouse full of foosball tables. I'm listing on Amazon. Somebody buys it, but now I have to go fill the order. 
Yeah, it generally doesn't happen overseas. It's more of, a, a, you know, wherever the platform is, you probably have a warehouse within that country. Um, so it would be for extended big catalogs, big items. Generally, Amazon's not doing this for small individual price because Amazon doesn't really want foosball tables and pool tables in their warehouses taking up a bunch of space, right? Right. So they have networked out brilliantly to thousands of warehouses all over the country. But for me and people like you, me and you, essentially drop shipping is we have found a product that we don't make. Uh, we figured out that there's a need for it or that, it, and it's already on Amazon. And we put up our own listing to uh, through our own seller account. We don't buy the inventory, we just sell it. And then the, we place the order through the company and they drop ship it, uh, meaning that they fulfill that order and send it to the customer. Right, well, so, so true, true drop shipping, you're selling someone else's product, maybe even without Correct. their knowledge. Yeah, for the average person like me and you, that's what we mean by drop shipping. Yeah, got it. Okay, and it it used to be a bit of a dying thing on Amazon, but it's coming back a little bit. You know, I have a friend that's got a business does about six hundred k a year profit uh, in drop shipping, uh, and doesn't own any product, doesn't warehouse any product. So, so somebody just like this this product is really good. I can sell it for just a little bit more through whatever brilliant marketing that I'm doing. So I go to Amazon and don't realize I can get the, the same exact product cheaper, right? But it's just that I bought this ad. Yeah, potentially. And the thing about it is like, you're on Amazon, you've bought things and it'll say like, you know, uh, uh, available from thirty four ninety five from these 10 other sellers, right? And you don't necessarily always buy the cheapest one. You may buy one because it has prime, has better shipping, it, maybe the seller has better ratings. So there's always choices that the customer has. And it's amazing, like you could have uh, 10 different options and all of those options are selling the same exact product and they, all may, they, they actually all may make money. I know, that's where it starts to get confusing. Um, going back to, you said you've done thousands of ads and copywriting. One of my favorite things now on Amazon is the listings break every rule that you ever learned in terms of writing headlines, you know, selling products. It's like tall chair, sit, stand, desk, you know, all these words just thrown together. So it's, you know, keyword stuffing a title. So like that headline is the most uh, important piece of real estate in terms of the SEO value. Uh, you know, the, you know, Amazon's algorithm crawls all the copy and it's looking for keywords um, to create a relevancy uh, to the product. And um, it is a bit art and science. I think a lot of people, you gotta me remember like 40% of the people selling on Amazon are, are not from America, right? And so English might be their second or third language. And so they're, you know, not all titles are created equal, put it that way. But there is a bit of an art, right? Because anytime you can have like a keyword phrase in order, it's better than if their order was you know, mixed up. And so you are trying to make kind of combined phrases so that they're in a long, this while still sound, sounding good, right? Because right. you got to write for humans as well as the computer. What about, you know, I mean, we talked about like drop shipping and we have food wall tables in one hand, but small products so i i have let's say uh I'm just looking around my desk like pens am i sh am i manufacturing the pens and shipping them to amazon and then amazon ships them yeah most of the time yeah so you can either on the on the seller side which is like where usually you and i would sell right not the vendor side but on the seller side there are you can either use the fulfilled by amazon program which FBA, uh, or you can fulfill as a merchant, right? Those are the two ways that you do it. Right. it there's massive advantages to being an FBA, right? So um, some things you can't, like pool tables, foosball, stuff like that, but small pens, things like that. I mean, they Amazon's such an efficient e-commerce company that, you know, if it's under a certain size and weight, you just can't beat their pricing. It's just as good as it can get, right? Um, 
And so you ship it in to Amazon, Amazon stores it. And then when, uh, when you make a sale, they'll pick it, pack it, ship it to the customer. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's similar. This is not a plug, but like for our book that we just launched, right? Basically Amazon, like we sent them the electronic file, but they, they print it, you know, put it all together, ship yep. it out. And, print on demand. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, same, same thing with certain products then. Similar, except for the product is actually made in advance, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. We talked a little bit about advertising on Amazon, right? So you've got this whole other area of, of just like on Google, where you're just paying to get your product, you know, to the top of the search. And that's where you yep. see the little, the little like recommended by Amazon, maybe, you know, at, or how does that work? That's a different section, yeah. So... I mean, the thing that's become obvious is that Amazon for most people has become much more of a pay to play game. Uh, you know, if you just look at like the first page of search results for any product now, uh, about a, a third of the positions are now paid for. Uh, whereas three years ago, you'd have one line of sponsored ads and maybe another one down the middle. Now there's a, a sponsored brand down at the top. The first four positions are all ads. Uh, you drop down a couple sections, you'll have a video, sponsored brand video. Um, then you'll have an editorial recommendations, which is what you're talking about. Those are like publisher plays. Those are like if you own a blog or a site that has a lot of content and traffic, you get those, you can go after those positions. Um, and then you'll have a couple more sponsored ads down by the bottom, and then you may have another. So it's just it's really gotten really complex. Um, and to do well, you have to, almost all products need to master the ad game to do well. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of Google search, right? It used to just all be organic and suddenly there were paid ads and now there's videos and then there's maps. And to, to me, just my experience on Google, you're kind of weary of, of the paid stuff, but on Amazon, I, it doesn't bother me. I, I click on it, even if it's recommended by Amazon. So yeah. tell me, like, well, what strategy do you and your clients use? Do you have to do a little bit of everything? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the reality is for most people, like you and I are in this space, right? So we get it. Most people don't even see whether or not it's an ad or an organic result. But the reality is some people are just going to always click that very first thing that shows up that they see. And so that's almost always going to be an ad. Yeah, you have to, you've got to, you've got to test and you've got to grow and expand through all of it, right? So um, all of those different uh, places have different ways to bid on them and different ways to structure the campaigns. Um, I mean, you can advertise in multiple ways right on, uh, competitors product detail pages right so there's a lot of and then you can there's a whole platform to advertise off of amazon to the people that have already been you know to your uh, to your listings that's yeah that's where it's going to get complicated but for example you click on a product and then you're you're reading about like the specifications and you're yep. down and it says other related products so that's where you can advertise on someone else's yeah, that's one of them. And then there's a, a newer segment that's actually a little mini display ad. And it's right below like the bull points on a competitor's products. Wow. So, you know, if you've identified a competitor that may be 20% more expensive than you, you can drop a little ad in or right. Like, and that's all the way what we would call it down the funnel, right? So the person's already searched. They've already decided to click on this. They're, they're in a buying mode on the detail page. And then they see this last, it's like uh like advertising in the checkout line at the grocery store. Yeah, no, that's great. And then you're just swapping products right there in the checkout line. No, it's that's awesome cool. if you're the advertiser. It's not so awesome <laughs> the other guy. Right. I mean, how, how do you even monitor that and fight back against that if you're, you know, the original advertiser? I mean, look, it's one of the one of the greatest compliments. Like you have a launch a new product, and is is how quickly the competitors start targeting your brand name. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I feel I feel that in the business world, I guess. You know, yes. There's just so many fascinating things about Amazon, like this whole world. And and I know we're just scratching the surface here. But yeah. what do you what do you see coming next? Like what what's the next big thing on Amazon? Oh, uh, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. So I think, you know, within the platform, uh, the 
uh, the visual assets, brand storytelling, it's, it's actually becoming a place where someone can build and grow a brand, um, where there wasn't much brand loyalty in the past. There certainly is becoming more of that. Uh, so that's within the platform. I think the thing that's changed the most in the last year or two is uh, the emergence of what we call uh, aggregators. Right? So these are companies that are buying up Amazon businesses like they're going out of style. Um, the first one came in the space maybe two and a half years ago. There's probably 75 of them now. Um, there's so much cash flowing into this space. Silicon Valley is all in it. All the big banks are in it. So it's, it's really kind of grown up in the last couple of years. Um, and so the, the availability to build a brand get 12 to 18 months under your, under your belt and flip it is bigger now than it ever has been. Give me an example. You've got um, an aggregator who comes in. What types of businesses are they snatching up and, and what's the strategy? Why are they just aggregating with Amazon? They're buying FBA businesses predominantly. Uh, generally, the lowest a lot of these guys go is half a million in revenue a year. Most of them target seven figures and up. Um, and, uh, but all across all categories, they've built an engine where they're consolidating operations, advertising, basically they, they, they've built an internal agency like we are, but then they're just, instead of like us getting our clients, they're just buying their clients. So um, they've done well. I mean, the, the biggest one in the space is called Thras, I-O, T-H-R-A-S-I dot I-O. Um, they were the fastest, company to get valued at a billion in revenue that was profitable ever. Um, they wow. went from zero to a billion in two years. Just they, by snatching up Amazon, basically yeah. companies that sell their products. Yeah, they now own just over a hundred brands they've bought in two and a half years. Wow. Yeah, and they've, they've raised 1.75 billion. Not. Nah, not too shabby. It's nuts, man. It's nuts. But uh, here's a million dollar question, maybe the billion dollar question. Though. I haven't asked you to think about margins. So you, you hear these big numbers, right? And you have a hundred million, let's say, let, let's say, let's bring it back to like a, a small business person. You're just sitting at home. These kind of big numbers don't really, yep. you know, resonate. At least they, they certainly don't or wouldn't with me. Um, so I'm thinking I have this idea. I want to try to sell on Amazon. If I could do hundred thousand dollars in sales that would be amazing so for a smaller operation even fba you know what type of margins can a company like that expect yeah realistically if you can pull out 25 percent, you're in great shape um uh, i think the day there's just more fees everything's getting more expensive shipping went up freight logistics went up everything manufacturing costs went up uh and all the while well you know businesses have have we try not to inch up our, our, our sales price all that much, right? So if you can pull 25%, you're in great shape. Anything above that or within five points, you know, below is, is good. Got it. That's, that's super helpful. I mean, again, if you're sitting at home, you're thinking, if I want to make six figures, right, I need to sell $400,000 worth of product. So that's yeah, cool. yeah. More like, you know, half a million is probably safer. Um, safer. But that's why, that's why selling sometimes on a brand is just so attractive because, you know, you get a half million dollar business that's doing 100,000 in, in EBITDA, right? You probably have some ad backs that make, maybe make it a little bit more than that. But, you know, right now there's, those businesses are selling at the low end, like 3.6, 3.7 and high end, maybe 4.2, 4.3 times STE. When, when you're running these types of businesses, you're, you're not buying your warehouse, you're not operating your warehouse, right. not staffing all the workers, you know, that that's such a huge, unbelievable advantage. Your, your job is literally just to figure out the little tweaks on how to sell better. So. Yeah. And that's also why a lot of businesses use agencies like ours, right? Is, is, you know, not only would they have to build out all that staff internally, but they've got to train and manage them, right? So, uh, um, but it's, it's fun when you, you know, we have a client, we, we started with him two and a half years ago. He was doing 50,000 a month in revenue. Uh, it's a good story to end on. And uh, he basically said, look, I, you know, I'm kind of, 
I'm, I'm kind of right at the edge of what I know. So I, what I know has got me to here. I'm going to give this. So he hired us to run his advertising. Um, and the guys worked hard. And it's a medical device product. They've done all the right things, gotten the approvals, things like that. Um, but uh, last month, he did 729000 in revenue. Um, and it's inside of 30 months from the day that we got them. So from 50K to 729. Yeah, yeah, not too shabby. That is, that is a good story. And that's right. But that's why you work with the experts, which is what I always tell people. Let people do what they're good at. And that goes for all types of businesses. So Keith, listen, man, thank you so much for your time. Again, tell people how to get in touch with you because you never know who's listening. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our website is page dot one no.com just page dot one i'm probably most active on linkedin uh you can find me there uh those are the best two places keep up the good work we'll talk to you soon thanks for having me brett Bye, buddy.